you doing? I'm good. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, I'll take this. Yeah, well, we got it. It's a good sign. Huh? I'm just kidding. Good afternoon. I'm Frank Rodriguez, Superintendent, Buford County School District, and I want to take a moment before uh, we begin to thank you for joining us here today. I know that uh, we all hugged our children a little tighter today and a little longer today. Uh, and as we all have seen and heard, about the devastating tragedy at an Uvalde, Texas elementary school. Our hearts and prayers go out to their entire community. I'm joined here today by Sheriff P.J. Tanner, Chief Stephanie Price of the Bluffton uh, Police Department, Chief Dale McDormand of the Buford Police Department, and Chief Beach of the Port Royal Police Department. We're so very fortunate to have outstanding law enforcement partners in our community that we regularly interact with to help keep our schools safe. Safety and security is a top priority for us here at the Buford County School District. Because we understand that many of our students and staff have also witnessed the news clips and the information of this terrible tragedy in Uvalde, Texas, we have provided our schools with support. Events such as these can lead to anxiety and fear, so we have dispatched resources to our schools, principals and and to our school's principals and counselors so that they can support any potential needs on their campus. We have counseling services in place, and we, have, we ask that our parents, if your child is in need of services, that you reach out to your school principal so that we can provide them the, the support that they need. We are fortunate to have an outstanding relationship with our law enforcement partners. We have joint training sessions with law enforcement. We drill for our emergencies and we debrief incidents with the intent of always fine-tuning our responses. I want to personally take this opportunity to thank them for always being ready, for always being supportive, and for always being responsive. And I invite them to make any comments that they would like at this time. Well, let me, let me say, uh, Superintendent, we're here uh, to help you in, in, in every way that we can. Uh, and we're also uh, a huge part, our law enforcement community is a hu huge part of our security, not only for the county, uh, but also all of our schools throughout the county. That would include public and private. I'm sure that you're gonna, going to have a, uh, uh, quite a few questions. I expect that you will. Uh, I don't have a lot of comments to make early on other than just to let the superintendent know that we're here uh, to help him in, in every way, uh, and our goal is to all is to make our schools, all of our school campuses throughout Beaufort County as safe as possible. And I'll ask the, the Chiefs to also uh, make whatever comments they want to make and we will be here to answer whatever questions you have. So, after the tragic events of yesterday, I will tell you we've had further conversations. We just, we just finished one. School security is a, is a topic that all of us speak about quite regularly. And um, we are doing everything we can to address these issues before they happen, and we'll continue to do that. Thank you. I'll just echo what everybody else is saying. You may have noticed increased patrols in the school zones and around the schools, and I would encourage parents. He talked about getting help. If your student needs help or your student's having issues or problems, please utilize those resources. There's free help in our community, and we can absolutely hook you up with those resources. I know the Bluffton Police Department has their mental health advocate, and they are certainly willing to help anyone. If you would like any of those services or have any of those questions, please contact our station. And I'll tell you this now, it is never too little or too small to report something that you see that you think is amiss. So please take the opportunity to do that. Thank you. Thank you all. And uh, honestly, uh, that is a component we always stress with our families and with our students. If you see something, say something. I know that our law enforcement partners and our school district are always in communication and always in contact. Uh, and, and we really value the support that we receive from them on an ongoing basis. Thank you. That's that's all I have for you today. Questions? Do you have any questions? Yeah. So, kind of talked about over 
overarchingly, when you guys are in that room all discussing things that we can do, answers we can give parents, what are some of those that we have talked about just in the last 40 minutes? Yep, so, well, we are always in contact and always in communication. It's, it's not just in, in the last 40 minutes, but I would say that uh, one of the things that's a critical component, to see something, say something, is essential to us. Information is critical and to, our, to our responsiveness. The sooner we have it, the more we have it, the more we can engage our partners uh, and we can deal with, with situations, right? So, so information is really important for us. See something, say something is important. Additionally, the support that we have available in our schools uh, regarding mental health support for students, mental health support for employees, uh, those are all essential and important components in helping to, uh, to deter uh, incidents you know, like that. And so we, we are, uh, you know, we value the partnerships that we have with the agencies that we work with to provide those mental health support services for students directly for security purposes, right? And in situations like this where a man goes into a school with an AR-15, for example, what does Beaufort County have in place or are they looking to do extra things to prevent things like that from ever being possible here? And one of the, the first things we always want to make sure is that we don't bring any weapons to campus, right? That's, that's, that's rule number one, you know, but in the event uh, that those things happen, we communicate and we engage with uh, our SROs, uh, and, and with uh, the support that we immediately have uh, within our schools. And the best, the best thing we can always try to do is to prevent anything like that from happening in the first place uh, with the supports and, and uh, services that uh, individuals might need. With um, resource officers, uh, any update or any, I guess, talk of maybe beefing up that security <coughs> aspects? I know I'm not very familiar with all the Beaufort County schools, sure. but I know usually it's just one per school. I just want to talk about sure. the security. Sure. So we, we currently have uh, uh, SROs in our schools. Uh, there are also some uh, roving SROs that, 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 are, that are present as well. We have uh, security guards uh, as well that we have within our school system. Um, those are things that we will continue. We look forward to the ability to uh, continue to bring on additional SROs into into, uh, into our school system. Uh, typically, uh, from the state, there's typically the opportunity to try to bring bring on board uh, uh, two additional SROs per year if they're available. So that's something we will continue to do. Have many Beaufort residents expressed a fear of a shooting happening here? And if so, do you do you hope things like today could address some of those fears? Uh, we have we've had uh, some phone calls today, for example, from from a few parents, not many, but a few, uh, just inquiring about the support services that we have, mostly around mental health support services that might be present in schools, uh, and and uh, additionally, uh, you know, if we have um, SROs or, or things like that available in schools. So that's that's the general type of question that we have received. Can you speak a bit about those mental health services that? Sure, we have we have countless uh, partners. Actually, we have uh, well over uh, I think ten or twelve partners that we have that we that we work closely with. Uh, we we can refer students to those partners. We can refer families to those partners. Uh, in addition, uh, we've added uh, an additional one uh, that uh, that is a uh, phone service uh, support for mental health as well. So those are all things that we have available with just the partners that we have. I know that uh, you all probably have connections to with uh, other agencies that support as well. So there, there are a lot of services out there, uh, and we look to, to connect students with those as they need them, or employees with those as they need them, uh, so, and, and, and families sometimes. Those family counseling services are important as well. Um, I know referring people and families to outside sure. services is one thing you guys are providing, but what about bringing services on campus, sure. especially with the immediate, you know, just happened yesterday and this is being sure. talked about today? Sure. One of the things that we always have in our schools are uh, our guidance counselors within our school system, and then we have a team of additional counselors that we shift around and provide uh, to have additional support at schools sometimes. You might have a, a loss of a family member as an example, right? And, and there's, a, there's a more immediate need at a particular school on a, on a given day. And so we shift some resources around in order to, to provide that additional support. Uh, we, we do have those available 
uh, when you have incidents like you had yesterday, uh, that, that, that catches everyone's attention, right? And, and ours included. And so we stand ready and, and the typical things that counselors might do aside from those type of counseling services may get put on the back burner on a day like today and tomorrow to provide those additional services and supports. But if a student needs it, we'll provide it. Um, I, one more question. I know summer break is about to come up, school's ending soon, but with this happening so close to the end of the school year, what are you guys looking towards, you know, possibly changing moving forward into the next coming school year? Yeah, so we are always looking at different security measures that we shift and adjust. Uh, we're always in communication with our law enforcement partners. We're looking at our own internal uh, security systems. And as we do that, we will make those changes or adjustments. But we don't talk about what those security measures are in particular because we don't want to reveal uh, information that's important to, to, to help keep uh, school safe. Um, and then a question for anybody else who wants to answer this. This is in regards to training for, you know, in the case there is an incident like this, have you guys done training? or response times, and what do you do when you respond to an incident like this? Well, I mean, there is there is a lot of training uh, that we're involved in uh, each year. Uh, active uh, shooter training is one of the things that we do on a repetitive basis, and it's extremely important. We always train for worst case scenario. I mean, that, you know, when we look at what happened in Texas yesterday, I mean, it, that is absolutely worst case scenario. And those things are difficult to train for, but we collectively uh, train throughout the county uh, together and in concert with each other to make sure that the training that we're providing to our first responders, that would be all first responders, fire, EMS, and law enforcement, is consistent with best practice and responding to a, a crisis such as a school shooting or a mall shooting or any other crisis. So that's done on a repetitive basis. I don't know that you can do it enough to be prepared for a situation like this fairly well. But also let me say that we're, we're fortunate in, in Beaufort County to have Frank. I mean, he's from, he's from Palm Beach County, Florida. He's been through these scenarios before. He was superintendent in Palm Beach County where he was exposed to these type things. So having him here in Beaufort County, we're very, very lucky. And look, our law enforcement leaders, uh, you know, Stephanie Price with Bluffton and Dale and Allen Beach, I mean, there is a I don't know how many years of law enforcement experience is standing in front of you, uh, but with all the experience we have and all the things that we've been involved in throughout our, our career and all the training that we do, uh, it's difficult to train for 100%, uh, but we try our best to make sure that what we're applying in our training fits our geographic areas within the county. Are there improvements that can be made? Sure, we, we identify that all the time. And when uh, with, uh, improvements are identified, then, then our, our, our job is to go out and make those improvements. And I think that's done on a consistent basis. Uh, again, we're, we're, we're looking at worst case scenario, hoping for the best, but planning for the worst. Chief? As far as interagency training, we've all trained. There's not a school, if it's a neighboring jurisdiction, all of our officers are familiar with the schools. We train in those schools. The deputies are familiar with schools in the city. Um, and the officers, first one there is the first one going in. I can tell you that's, that's what we train for. It doesn't matter if it's a school in the county. If it's one of our guys that gets there first, they're going in. And that's, we, that's why we train together. I know we... I know we mentioned some parents had reached out um, this morning, so I guess what would kind of just be the message to all these parents, um, obviously over live and on the web, about you know having a scenario where you're scared to send your, your children to school? Well, you know, I will tell you that uh, our attendance today is no different than our attendance any other day, right? So um, I think that's, that's, that's good news for about how our parents you know, feel, but at the same time, uh, what I want our parents to know is that we take these things very seriously, right? That even though that didn't happen in this community, that uh, we prepare, like uh, Sheriff said, for the worst, right? And and every every one of them uh, has my phone number, and I have their phone number, and and uh, and we we speak we speak regularly because uh, there's often things that we need to talk about, and I'll meet with them, uh, and 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 we talk about. Uh, 
you know, what are the needs are that we identify, and how can we always improve? It's always seeking continuous improvement around uh, our safety and security. And so, you know, we work at it. We work hard at it. So, uh, I think what what uh, what I want our, our parents to know that it's something we take very seriously and that we work very hard at all the time. It is it is our top priority. They're they're entrusting us at the school district with uh, their most prized possession. And we know that, and we don't take that much. Dr. Rodriguez, I wondered how many active shooter drills are done per year at each school? Is there a quota that needs to be met, and how is it, um, is there an accountability platform to make sure that each, if it's three per year, that those three are happening? We act, we do active, duty, uh, uh, active shooter training uh, uh, every year at our, at our uh, schools. Um, we do lockdown drills at, at our school. We go above what the state requires on those drills. I think the state requires two, and we go above that. Uh, we do monthly emergency drills at, at our school. Uh, RSROs in our schools are part of those drills. Uh, and we get feedback on those drills. And we, we, we talk about it. We talk about what went well. We talk about where there's opportunities for improvement, because that's what it is. It's, it's really a continuous improvement process around these things. Here. You know? And so, uh, so we do have active shooter training, uh, and and uh, uh, we know that our uh, law enforcement agencies have great collaboration not only with us but with each other, uh, which which is important. God forbid we don't have any. Yes, sir. Have you, do you have any insight on on how the shooter got access to to the school? Because it's kind of always my understanding that that keeping somebody out is is kind of one of the primary lines of defense. Yeah, I think what we're going to find over the next couple of days is that more information will be mm -hmm. coming out on that. Uh, and and I think one of the things we've learned over the years, certainly, uh, I was in Palm Beach County School District, um, just south of us, our neighbor, Broward County, had, had the Parkland incident. And, uh, and what we learned from that, one of the things we learned about that parking incident is that over time, more and more and more and more information comes out as law enforcement gets a chance to piece the puzzle together mm -hmm. and gets a chance to, to work through it. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure we're going to hear more about that kind of thing in the day. Thank you all. I appreciate your time today very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.